All right, so we are watching and reacting to the interview from Taylor Lorenz of Kaya Rychik of Libs of TikTok. This is coming from Taylor Lorenz' YouTube page. Um, go and give her video a like, uh, view the video on her page, and give her a subscribe if... Uh, if her content seems appealing to you, go support her. Taylor Lorenz is a an American journalist. Uh, she is a columnist with the Washington Post. Uh, Kaya Rychik owns the Libs of TikTok handle on various uh, social media platforms. Um, it is largely a far-right and anti-LGBT social media account. Um, it has grown into, um, it started off as what could have been like a, some lighthearted jabs toward, um, lighthearted jabs towards like funny stuff or cringy stuff leftists or liberals do online and has turned into one of the most clear cut, uh, demonstrations of stochastic terrorism that I've ever seen online. Um, it has directly caused a lot of harassment, a lot of hate speech, transphobia. Um, it's known for spreading false claims, especially relating to medical care of uh, transgender children. Um, it's also notable that uh, Taylor and Kaya have history. Um, Taylor was instrumental in 2022 in uncovering Kaya's identity. Um, whenever you register a domain, you can't do it anonymously. And so her information was on that. That was found in Taylor Lorenz used that as well as other um public information and spread that far and wide so that we now know who she is. And so this uh, interview, I've seen a couple of clips of it. It seems like it'll be interesting to say the least. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Do you know what, is that a public park or is that a private? It's private. private. All right, well, we'll try to keep it short. Okay, thank, thank you so you. much. It. Yeah, of course. Oh my gosh, the struggles yeah. of LA, I swear. Um, okay. Well, now that we're going, um, so thank you so much for meeting. First of all, I saw Seth Dillon today saying that you guys are no longer affiliated. What happened with there? I know that he invested in you early, was a huge supporter of you. What happened to that relationship? Uh, just parted ways. For what reason? Personal reasons. Yeah? Yeah. What, you didn't align Totally with amicable. I love Seth. Yeah. He's a great mentor. So Seth is the CEO of... Um, the Babylon Bee, which is kind of a shitty version, shitty conservative far right version of the onion, um, started off as like a genuinely funny, uh, Christian version of the onion, which kind of satirized, um, Christian culture, church culture, poked lighthearted fun at it. And now it's just kind of full on far right, uh, propaganda and, quote unquote comedy, which, and I think is also kind of, um, a good example of stochastic terrorism as well. They often go after the LGBT community. So why wouldn't you want to And apparently, um, Seth had backed Kaya for a while and like funded her. And recently, um, I guess they have parted ways. So I don't, I don't really know anything about that. You know, why isn't he involved in the business anymore? Just personal reasons. I'm not getting into it. Oh, okay. When did that, when did that sort of break off? Um, recently. Uh-huh. So how many staffers? So she just seems like she does not want to be here at all. I don't know why she agreed to this interview. Tell me a little bit more about your organization. We are a small team. Uh, just a couple people. And it's all just... She seems like really on edge and, uh, uncomfortable. Distributed? It's what? It's all distributed, as in it's all remote, pretty much? Uh, you guys, yeah, you yeah. Office space? it's remote, yeah. Got it. So when did you start, I guess, 
what got you into all this? I've always wanted to ask you. I know, I mean, I wrote about sort of the history of your Twitter account, but how did you get involved in politics? Uh, if you watch any of my interviews, I talk about this all the time. But uh, just, you know, COVID radicalized me. Yeah. I don't think many people are watching a lot of Kyle Reichick interviews. Um, I mean, these are like basic questions. I don't know why she would be frustrated with her asking this. And they were like forcing us to wear masks and not letting us leave our homes. And, uh, you know, not letting us work and, and people losing their jobs. Uh, and then people now forcing a vaccine, an experimental vaccine, people dying from the vaccine. So how did that get you interested in LGBTQ issues? I got, it got me interested in politics, and then, and then uh, once I was interested in politics, I, I stumbled upon this, um, this whole movement, and I was absolutely appalled by what I was seeing. Appalled by what? Um, the, radi the radicalization of it, um, the... Are you talking about the, uh, this interview? Why is it still on... YouTube? The way that they come after our most innocent and vulnerable population or, or kids. I don't know. Is it, is there like bad stuff in it or what? Um, the, oops, the way that it makes, it makes, there's nothing logical about it. There's nothing logical about topping off kids' body parts. There's nothing logical about giving kids porn in school. Um, there's, there's two sexes and that's it so coming out strong with the talking points so you know anything out of that it's just based on lies and nonsense yeah did you grow up i know you grew up in a sort of a more conservative community did you know any lgbtq people growing up what was your exposure to that community just in life prior to sort of understanding the world through politics um i never yeah i don't know um yeah, I, I assume there was probably misinformation about all sorts of stuff in here. Um, maybe the fact that it's like a, an interview format makes it different. I'm not sure. I don't really pay attention to it. So you didn't have any LGBTQ friends or anything, no. family members? No. So your first exposure to the LGBTQ world was through basically learning about it through the, the media ecosystem. Uh, through themselves, actually, they would say exactly what they, what their intentions are, what their whole movement is about. Uh -huh. So I learned about it through watching their own videos. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I yeah. What sort of videos were you watching? I mean, are you just all talking the about ones, the TikToks that you share? And, and tons more on TikTok. It's all over TikTok. Yeah. Very easy to find. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. You know, I I feel like there's been, especially on um, my colleagues have done great reporting on sort of like this rift on Twitter. I know that you have a very conservative fan base and in your comments sometimes you'll see a lot of commentary about sort of the great replacement theory. What are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on your common your, the comments on your post telling me to kill myself? Horrible. Jesus. Like what why is she here? What is she doing here? Um great replacement theory um is a uh originally like an anti-Semitic theory um, that people of Jewish descent are trying to replace us. Um, but it's it's kind of expanded more recently. Um, Tucker Carlson uh, not long ago discussed this and, and spread this uh, idea on his show. And it's basically that um, immigrants... Uh, foreigners are coming in and or purposefully being brought in and and to replace like uh, white Christian people and so seems like Kaya doesn't want to answer that question yeah, yeah. Well, well obviously against that yeah so would you come out and, con and condemn that publicly oh I would condemn it anytime I'm against you know I'm against murdering anyone of course so you're against death threats against against me I, yeah, I'm, I would, I'm a big... I don't know why she uh, is saying this or, like, acting offended, but th this is, like, this is what her platform does, is sends hate towards uh, marginalized people, minorities, um, 
all kinds of death threats, bomb threats, etc. I don't know why she would be upset about that. Why? Why does she have a problem with that? Big, you know, as somebody that's dealt with a lot of online harassment, I don't, I don't defend uh, threatening to murder anyone. But I guess I'm curious, you know, because a lot of times it comes after an attack from the, in the media, like some, someone like you or another journalist. So are you saying that, like, you know, if somebody posts? I know in in 2022 when um, Taylor leaked her identity, um, which was public information, um, she was very upset and claimed that she was had been doxxed and that she had re received all these kinds of threats and everything. And so it's just interesting that um, when she gets a taste of her own medicine, that doesn't like change her thoughts about what she is doing online. Post something and then attacks follow. That person should answer for those attacks? No, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, I'm okay. saying that they, they, people like you tell me that all the time. So I'm just asking if you think the same thing. Yeah, I don't think I have said. Okay, so she doesn't care about it. She just wants to make sure Taylor's being consistent, I guess. That here, but I, you know, I think it's, I, I think it's kind of interesting. I guess in the conservative movement, there's this ideology around sort of white nationalism, um, which is obviously kind of a hardline ideology that's generally been pretty critical of Jewish communities. And I'm wondering, as a Jewish woman, how do you feel about sort of aligning yourself with those? people and accounts you know you see this sort of rhetoric in your replies and I only bring it up I'm not saying that that you necessarily endorse that rhetoric I would imagine that you don't but how do you kind of think about those nuances when you're thinking about kind of the audience that you're building um some of your audience says we should top off kids body parts how do you think what do you think about that I I, I don't know I, like is she doing an interview or like why I don't understand why she agreed to this interview and is being so like immediately uh combative what you're talking about like a girl says she wants to be a boy so she tops off her breasts i'm a big uh, you know i believe in personal liberty and bodily autonomy so, personally so kids should be able to cut off their breasts if they think that they're boys i mean i believe in gender ideology i guess i i personally my my feeling is that i believe in personal liberty i grew up in a town where a lot of people for their middle school graduation, women got nose jobs. I knew somebody that got a boob job at age 14. And I. That's true. There's a lot of. Um, a lot of underage people get cosmetic surgeries for one reason or another. Um, sometimes they are gender affirming care, you know, as, as, as like uh, women getting augmentations, um, stuff like that. And I that's been happening for a long time and I don't see them having an issue with that or being up in arms about that. I guess I struggle to kind of understand the criticism when there's certainly no criticism of that sort of thing, right? But then there's criticism of this other sort of gender affirming, you know, stuff. So, so you're you know, comparing a boy being allowed to chop off his penis to a teenage girl getting a nose job? Um, well, just to be extra clear, I don't believe that 13 year olds are able to make those sort of medical decisions. Minors are, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, the, um, just for misinformation purposes, clearing that up, um, bottom surgery is not an option for minors at all. Um, I believe it's either like 15 or 16 in most states where top surgery can be an option. And oftentimes that is like a last resort when all other avenues have been tried for um, gender affirming care to help kind of ease the either body dysphoria or whatever discomfort someone might be feeling. Um, it is, yeah, but bottom surgery like for 13 year olds is just not happening. That's just not, not the case. And where? Um, Children's National Hospital in DC gives 16 year olds hysterectomy. Oh, 16 year olds. They gave me that, they told me that directly. They said 16 girls and younger, that's what they said. So, so no. hysterectomies, um, there are definitely minors. I know for sure as young as 12 who are getting uh, double mastectomies. Um, they allow, they definitely allow vaginoplasties no, for they don't. minors. Um, um, not, um, uh, not in the case of like gender affirming care to my knowledge or anything like that, um, you know, to like fix defects or 
um, due to injuries or something like that. Obviously, that is going to be an option, but not for, for gender-affirming care, no. And phalloplasties. No. I'm not aware of a specific case of a minor, but they allow 18-year-olds, yeah. Yeah, which has, you know, 18-year-olds, okay, so, you're an adult. But let's just get back to the great replacement stuff, because I'm curious, what are your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, she's pivoting ideology? a lot. I mean, how many... There, there, there were there were times that um, there were some months over the past three years that there were more illegals coming into our border than children being born in the U.S. Is that not does that not look like they're trying to replace us? I guess a, a sort of imagine bringing America in a whole new a, population, a melting pot. Isn't that sort of what America was founded? No, on? but they're they're actually bringing in more people than are actually being born. What a crazy world, it, like a crazy brain that you must have to think that not only are Democrats and liberals like able to rig our election system and like steal the election, but also on top of that, we're able to bring in people from all around the world um, to flood our borders to gain voters for the Democratic Party, like, like, they they give so much power to Democrats and liberals. Like we are not that competent, I promise you. So I guess if you, it sounds like you sort of do ascribe to this theory of the Great Replacement. Um, how does that? Make I just you look feel? at the facts and the numbers. Well, so I mean, just let's give a corollary, right? A lot. Of so yeah, I mean the, um, just looking at the facts and numbers. Yeah, I mean we we have immigration. That's we're a free nation. We are a nation of immigrants. Um, you, you can't just look at the numbers and say, oh, well, there's this um, strategic plan to replace us as white Christian conservative people. A lot of Jewish that is people not logical. Fled, you know, Europe came over here also as immigrants. Um, and there's a lot of criticism towards Jewish people in those movements, in those far right movements. So I'm just wondering as a Jewish woman, sort of how you feel about that and your role in cultivating this fan base that might think of you as an as a as a minority or an outsider. Yeah, and again, a lot of it is it was originally rooted in and is still rooted in anti Semitism, um, not just other xenophobia. Uh, not all cultures are equal. Yeah. So I know you. So this she probably. It seems like she's going to give very uh, surface level and vague answers for everything, but this is kind of getting into racy realism here. I have a lot of concerns about educational materials and books, library books and things, um, especially. They're importing people who want to destroy America, and who who want to who come here and and do not stand for what America stands for. So, and I think, and we see it, there's time after time after time after time. They come in, they're destroying our cities, they bring crime with them, and they, they are bringing them in to replace us. And um, yeah, I think people from, from various countries, you know. If I'm not mistaken, the, the crime rate among our, um, among our population is much higher than that amongst the immigration immigrant population. So they, they're all different. So, you know, just back to the sort of education stuff, I know that you're interested in removing a bunch of books from libraries um, that you consider inappropriate. I was just wondering, out of all the books that you've sort of tried to get removed, how many have you read? I've read a couple of them. Uh-huh, which ones? Um, Gender Queer. Uh-huh. I've read, this book is gay. Uh-huh. Um, I've read uh, Flamer. I've read, what were some of the other ones? Um, My Shadow is Pink. Uh, it Feels Good to Be Yourself. I highly doubt that she has read any of these. Maybe she has seen someone read a few pages off of them on TikTok or Twitter or something like that. I highly doubt that she's read any of these. Mm -hmm. There's so many more. Tons of them. How do you kind of square, would you say, I feel like you are, or at least I feel like you've spoken about free speech before and the need for free speech and sort of supported Elon Musk's sentiments in that area. Would you say that you're a free speech supporter? Yeah. So how do you square the sort of being this free speech supporter with wanting to ban literature? 
what kind of literature? Any kind of literature. I mean, I, I would think what that. What kind of literature am I trying to ban? Oh, I thought you were just trying to say you're that you. Have, I mean, you've made an effort to get books removed from schools. What kind of books? Books t dealing with LGBTQ people and sexual. No, that's education. not what I said. Oh, so you're not trying to get any books banned from school? I, that's not what I said either. Okay, why don't you explain to me what, how you're thinking about this? You just accused me of wanting to ban books. What kind of books am I trying to ban? Uh, you tell me. I'm not trying to ban anything. But well, you're not trying to ban any books. Who said I'm trying to ban books? Are you trying to remove books from libraries? From public school libraries. Okay. So how do you square your sort of notion of free speech and free expression and allowing all of that stuff with wanting literature removed and wanting access to information removed? What kind of literature? You tell me. Uh, porn. Gay porn. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what do you consider gay porn in these books? Uh, so you want you want to see it? Are you talking about the stuff that you've tweeted, basically? You you can see yeah, it like there's pictures of like blowjobs and like how to have gay sex with like naked people and people masturbating and stuff. Yeah. Did you like, I, pictures of it? Yeah. Oh, totally. And yeah. I you know I went to public school. And we had a sex ed class in public school where we were shown, you know, information about sexual health and, you know, sex and, and masturbation and things like that. Um, I'm curious about your own education. I mean, was that something you were, were you ever, did you ever go to a sex ed class or is this all sort of new to you where you're sort of learning about how this works in public schools? Um, I'm not, I wasn't, I don't live under a rock. So you did have sex ed classes when you were growing up? Um, we had some kind of education, yeah. Uh-huh. So you do think it's important for children to have education, sex education? Uh, not the way they're doing it in public schools. Uh-huh. How are they doing it? Uh, they're giving kids porn and telling uh, third graders that they should masturbate. Um, they're giving middle school children guides to gay sex and anal sex, um, sex toys. How would you describe yeah. the type of sex education that you would like to see in schools? Um, at this point, I want all sex education actually removed from schools because I don't trust the schools to do it. Okay. After what we've seen, I don't trust them at all. That would be incredibly detrimental. Um, that would eh, greatly increase the amount of unwanted pregnancies, of STDs. Uh, I mean, just um, for a lot of people, the only education, the only like factual uh, unbiased education they get in like a non-judgmental area is going to be in their public school. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that is absolutely absurd. Oh, zero. We need to completely eradicate it and then re redo it in a, in a normal way that's appropriate. So I saw you said that you got banned from Stripe today. How much money did you have tied up in that platform? Uh, so just, yeah, just to go back, I mean, I think there's like legitimate conversations to be had about what, what is age appropriate, um, what things should be taught at what ages. And, um, you know, I'm all for parents being aware of what's being taught and um, having a voice in, in what is taught, but like uh, absolutely this kind of education is vital to have in public schools. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. Mm -hmm. they, they, they already restored me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're back. Yeah. Um, I noticed, you know, I think it was around last summer, you deleted a lot of your tweets and you kind of stopped posting. This is. I'm surprised at this point that um, Kai hasn't gone the way of like uh, Nick Fuentes in. Uh, like online payment processors not wanting to work with her, but that that is interesting. This is when Seth Dillon kind of tweeted, you know, asking if you fell off or, you know, saying that you weren't posting as you used to. What happened during that time, and did you think about quitting? I have no idea, and no, I never thought about quitting. Mm -hmm. Why'd you delete all your old posts? It was just a one-time editorial decision. I stand by all my posts. Hmm. Um, you know, I, I guess... Taylor, by the way, is doing a great job here keeping the conversation rolling and um, interviewing a, a brick wall, basically, a hostile brick wall. Speaking of deleting posts, you still have a post up accusing the Uvalde shooter of being trans. Um, obviously, that's been debunked. Yeah, there's a community note on it. Uh huh. So yeah. why not remove that post if you're so comfortable with removing posts? Because there's a community note. I think it's clear. 
it's it's obviously it was obviously it was unintentional it was it, there was a watermark on it it was from a meme uh, an account that was going around um, so just delete it. And I'm glad there's a community note so people know that. Do you, that was do you believe if, say, a journalist posts something factually incorrect or wrong, especially about someone else, you know, if somebody was to say something factually wrong about you, do you believe they should remove that or do you think they should be able to keep that content up? Um, Twitter is free speech. Um, you know, people lie about me all the time on there and. Um, they don't get they don't get taken down um there's just like no logic or conviction behind anything that she is saying it is really interesting if you want it, it has to go both ways so, so you believe that people should be allowed to keep up wrong information about you and have no reason be able to keep that up free speech is free speech okay so I'm kind of curious how you square that with the letter that you sent this morning to V Spear, claiming that, you know, you were going to try to sue her for slander. Um, you know, if free speech is free speech, then why are you threatening your critics with lawsuits? Well, defamation is different. So would you call misidentifying a shooter's sexuality defamation? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Um, like I said, there there's already a community note on it. Uh, so I'm glad that people now and you admit know. that it's wrong, right? It was the Uvalde Yeah, Sierra and trans. I wasn't the creator of that of that image. Sure, but you can imagine if somebody amplified wrong information. You're you know, the media, like you know, like Washington Post and other um, places, they lie all the time. A big part too of of this and of uh, stochastic terrorism is um, the plausible de plausible deniability that you have. Um, a lot of Kaya's stuff is just reposts, and so, you know, she can go hands off and say, you know, I, I didn't really, I didn't say that personally, or I don't really believe that. And um, just like with Tucker, Car Tucker Carlson not long ago, um, they argued in court that, like, no reasonable person would take what he's saying seriously. Like, this is obviously uh, meant for entertainment, like you can't take this seriously. And so there's, there's just like, you're able to spread so much hate, so much disinformation while having a lot of plausible deniability behind you. And it is really gross. They're never held accountable. They never remove it. They lie and lie and lie. So, um, I am not going to, if you want to hold me to that level, then, then I get to hold you to that level as well. And all the other media. Um, so I just don't think, you know, it's, we're not we're not it's not an it's not uh it's not accurate to to um to compare it because was the uvalde shooter trans the uvalde shooter wasn't trans got it and so i guess knowing that you've posted wrong information you're saying it should stay up and everybody else should be allowed to keep whatever they have up as well that, is that sort of your stance am i accurately understanding it um, is there a law against No, not asking law. I'm just asking your personal sort of opinion. I'm just kind of curious because it seems like you have come after other people, such as vSphere and other critics, saying, you posted wrong information about me, take it down. I totally get that. That's your prerogative. It's different be with defaming um, a, a journalist like that. They're, they're defaming me. Uh-huh. And you don't think that calling a shooter trans when they weren't trans is defaming anyone? Uh, no. Okay. Interesting. Um... I guess I'm they're like no, they're knowingly lying about me. The <laughs> just like trying to watch the wheels turn and like her so smugly squirm into a position is just is funny. Uh huh. And you, and what would you say that you did when you sort of posted that about the shooter being trans? Like I said, a, po a image that was going around for months that I shared from another thing accidentally, and I'm glad there's a community note on it. Whoops. Accidentally defamed somebody. Accidentally. Um, I know you come from a more traditional family um, and sort of a more traditional culture. What is your family? And uh, think of your success. Um, you know, you've made a huge career for yourself. You're obviously a rising star in conservative media. How has that affected your interpersonal relationships? I'm not going to get personal. Uh -huh. I'm going to my personal relationships. Yeah. How has it affected your life? I mean, just dealing with this sort of fame relatively overnight. 
So, I mean, thanks and partly to you, there's been a lot of like death threats, uh, a lot of really nasty messages. Um, but you seem kind of proud about the press that you've received. I mean, your profile picture is showing, holding up a newspaper with you in the headline. Yeah, a newspaper where they just basically lied about me. Um, I thought it's, it's, uh, it's, it's funny that they, they just continue to make up these like lies and libels. I You've gotten a big, I mean, even if you discount the mainstream media and just talk about the conservative media, I think your platform has risen pretty significantly. What changes has it had? Yeah, so uh, if you don't know about that newspaper, it basically says like wherever Kaya goes, then terror follows, something like that. Basically like just covering the um, uh, harassment that her platform has caused in she seems very well aware of it and is very proud of it. On you. I mean, I cover the content creator industry and I've seen a lot of people go from sort of a very low key life, which I would imagine you're living before, to a massive amount of attention and, you know, money and powerful people around you. How has that affected you? Um, like I said, uh, some safety issues. Um, in part, thanks to... What I think happened is, and I don't know, as it goes on, we may see some more like original thoughts or like some logic behind anything she's saying, but it seems like maybe what happened is she doesn't believe anything that she says. Um, she has no passion or conviction behind any of this, and she basically has just... Um, understood the algorithm really well or perhaps accidentally and found something that works really well which is just the most antagonistic and vile uh, content which plays really well with the conservative base and she has fully leaned into it uh, for the money uh, to you and to some other members of the media um, but, but I mean, like you can't, you can't do what she is doing and be this whiny about any kind of backlash that she gets. You can't do that. I'm not going to get into my personal life. Oh no, not about your personal life. I'm just wondering about your career aspirations. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? We'll see. You can make all the plans you want and God could. Probably going to be like a anchor on OAN or something like that. Probably. Decide something else, so. so you don't have any sort of five-year plan, ten-year plan? I mean, I have plans, but uh, nothing I'm going to share. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, you know, um, <laughs> if Trump was re-elected, would you be interested in a job with his, his administration? Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Who are you supporting in the election? Uh, there's only one, there's one candidate, Trump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will you be campaigning on his behalf? Uh, we'll see. Would you prefer, would you, I mean, are you hoping to kind of, I guess, like, would you see yourself in D.C.? I haven't made any plans yet. Mm -hmm. How did you um, get connected with Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma, and how many times? You I wonder what it's like to, like, uh, I just wonder what she is like as a person, just, like, day to day, to live with, to be friends with. Um, what kind of people is she around? That I would be very interested to know that have you been to that state um i was there once they have unfortunately a lot of wokeness in the red state and uh, uh i'm trying to help how do you originally sort of what had oklahoma get on your radar as opposed to I, some others because they i started posting about the stuff going on in schools there um you know like i do across the country and then you know people you know people were very upset that this was happening in their schools so, and you've been watching. Also, is this, is she wearing a shirt with Taylor's face on it? Like, she's such a fucking troll. Um, what do you think qualifies you to be on the board or, uh, you know, have to do with education, the education system there? Being that I don't believe you have children in the Oklahoma schools, you don't live in Oklahoma, you've only been once. How does that qualify you to sort of serve on in that capacity? What are the qualifications that... Especially, like... Um, only having discovered like LGBTQ issues like a, a two years ago, a year or two ago, 
um, and then like being trying to be an authority on it or on uh, SEX education. That's that they require to be on this committee. Um, USA Today reported on that, but I believe it was that you had to. Oh God, I'm not, I might get it wrong, but it. Um, I think you have to be some sort of educator. You have to have worked as an educator. Taylor is being like so disarming and like bubbly and kind. I I don't think I could do it. Okay, I was a teacher once. You were? Yeah. Okay. So you feel like that qualifies you to sort of inform policies in Oklahoma? Um, I wasn't aware of any kind of qualifications that they require. Uh -huh. um, I don't believe they require any qualifications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I was thinking more even just un informally, um, but that makes sense. I guess, you know, speaking of Oklahoma, obviously we saw the tragic death of Nex, um, you know, a yeah, young very child. Tragic. I'm curious about your reaction. Um, you know, you posted a selfie shortly after people were asking you to address the issue and you said, you know, to, to the haters and the losers, who are you addressing in that statement? Anyone who hates me and anyone who's a loser. <laughs> the... To center yourself in that is, wow. Okay, why would you choose to post that in response to people asking you to speak about this child's death? It was not a response to that. I guess, why would you post that prior to making any statement about Nex's death? So, just to be clear, you're trying to police me on when I'm allowed to post selfies? Yeah, I'm just curious. I wanted to post it, I thought it was a cute picture, and I just decided to post it. How do you feel about Nex? Like, oh. Yeah, I mean, just like so much possible deniability, it's like this, it's an obvious dog whistle. Um, man, it's very tragic. Uh -huh. It's horrible. Do you believe Nex should have been allowed to receive gender affirming care? Uh, she should not be allowed to go on irreversible puberty blockers or get sex change surgery. Uh, puberty blockers are reversible um they have been around for decades and have been used safely to treat uh precocious per, precocious puberty um and basically all they do is put a pause on puberty which can be incredibly devastating to go through for a transgender person and so it puts a pause on that and um gives time for them to get a little bit older so that they can make more of an informed decision and they can, uh, about like transitioning if they want to later on. And if they get a little bit older and they decide transitioning is maybe not for me or, you know, whatever it is, they can go off of that. They can go through puberty like normal. Um, and if they, but if they don't decide to do that, then, um, you have, you know, put the hold on it for then for, for, you know, at the time, and um it is um uh, much easier to kind of transition in the way that you would like um when you haven't gone through puberty like that and so there's a there's a ton of misinformation around puberty blockers how do you think about the fact that you know so often your posts also um puberty blockers and like gender affirming care in general is the most effective form of treatment for um, gender dysphoria, for um, people suffering from like depression or anxiety or other issues related to um, not, be, not having the body that they feel, not, not aligning with, you know, the way that they feel on the inside. Um, Gender affirming care is the most effective form of treatment, and um, transitioning uh, has an incredibly low regret rate. Like out of all of the surgeries, like knee surgery, back surgery, um, it has like a one percent regret rate, which is pretty much unheard of in the world of surgery. Things that you post about hospitals, libraries, schools, etc. Um, you know, after you make these posts about them. They deal with threats, sometimes bomb threats, sometimes harassment. Um, it's we don't know who's calling in the threats. Um, 
And I mean, look, bomb threats are bad. I've said that a thousand times. So she's whining about the threats that she got when Taylor exposed her. Um, Taylor doesn't know the people calling in the threats. Um, people calling bomb threats should be arrested and investigated. Uh, you can't call in bomb threats. Um, but I don't. I just don't know what it. What does it have to do with? Well, I guess you know. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean this. Again, Tucker Carlson, like, you can't take anything I say seriously. So, like, we can't, you can't hold me accountable. The NBC investigation found at least 33 instances where you posted about a specific person or institution, and that person or institution was immediately bombarded with death threats and violent threats, um, including bomb threats, other violent threats. That's a pretty significant correlation. Yeah, so as, as any kind of public figure or content creator, anything like that you really have to take great care about what you talk about who you talk about the information about people that you share online um and if you care about people you are going to realize if there is something happening or if there's a cause and effect where you are doing something like this posting and then immediately they get uh, threats and stuff like that. You have an ethical imperative to change what you're doing, to stop what you're doing, to be accountable for the words that you say, the things that you do. Um, what Kaya does is unethical and vile, and she knows what she is doing and would never take responsibility for it. You know, what are your thoughts? Yeah, on? I don't know if you saw, but I got like tons of death threats. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Um, the past. Why, why, why should anybody care about that? If you are, if you know what you're doing causes harm and you seem to be proud of it and you're still doing it and you make excuses for it, you don't get to whine about the threats that come at you. You just don't get to do that. Sorry. This week after the entire media machine came after me. So are they responsible for those? I don't think that there is. Um, I the same correlation. Are you receiving bomb threats? I'm, I'm receiving death threats. Like, hi, I'm going to come murder you. Yeah. And I definitely sympathize with you there. Like, I get those literally. The article goes live, and then I get those threats. I get the same thing when a Fox News article goes live. So, so this, um, too, also uh, 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 an aspect of this is, this is just something that goes along with being a public figure, right? Like, once you get to a certain level of notoriety or fame, you're going to get death threats. Um, it doesn't make it okay, but that is just something that is going to happen, and... Um, something that you just have to be aware of. Um, if you're going to put yourself out there the way Kaya has done and spread hate and harm and everything the way that she has done, you're going to get that. And um, yeah, like I said, it doesn't excuse people doing that, but it is an entirely different thing to send this kind of hate and fame and notoriety to people who aren't asking for it, to people who are just trying to live their lives, that are in schools, that are teachers, stuff like that, like sending hate their way is just at a totally different level. When you are in the public eye, um, people are not responsible to not tell the truth about you just because it is going to send some hate your way. That's not how that works. Oh, are the, is the journalist responsible, the journalist who posted the article? I would say, um, you know, there's a different responsibility when we're talking about media. And I, and I guess to me, a death threat is different than a violent bomb threat. A death threat, I think we're kind of getting normalized to them, unfortunately, online. We get a lot of them. Probably you and I get them constantly, 24-7. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, that's, it is unfortunate, but it is, it is normalized for, for public figures like that. Um, 
Taylor is exactly correct here. It is just different for um, a public figure versus, um, you know, punching down, I guess would be a good term, uh, to people who are not asking to be in the public eye at all. I'm wondering kind of how you think about taking these obscure people, right? Because you and I are both public right. figures, and I, I imagine you and I can both, we have a high tolerance, right, for what... I promise I haven't pre-watched any of this. We, ...what we can handle online. Say you're taking a private citizen, you know, a gay teacher, for instance, in a small town, and you post about that person, and then that person subsequently, who had no media presence prior, receives pretty violent threats. How does that make you feel? We need it. We need to answer the the question first, though. Is the is the journalist responsible for actions that have to happen after? So you consider sort of t your posts about private citizens, incendiary posts. You consider that journalism. I'm an independent journalist. Uh huh. And do you think that there's a difference between doing journalism on a completely private figure that has no public presence and no institutional power versus reporting on a powerful public institution or person? You still didn't answer the question. Is the journalist responsible for reporting for any actions that happen after the reporting? Um, if, if they have false information in their article, perhaps, if they are slandering somebody in their article, perhaps. But if they are uh, telling the truth or... Yeah, I mean, if they're telling the truth and they're reporting factual information, um, no, they are not responsible for that. It could be uh, different, though, if you have a journalist who... It has like a series going through something. Um, and I don't know if I want to follow this, but like, yeah, like like a series of reporting on certain things um, or certain people. And every time that they do this series, these people receive a lot of hate and um, threats and, and like credible threats and stuff like that. Then if they know that the series that they're doing is causing this and they continue to do it, then yes, there may be some responsibility there and they should definitely reconsider doing that series. And that is much more akin to what uh, Raya is doing. Personally, I think that journalists should take care and should, should, you know, should consider sort of yeah. the framing. And I think that they should do their best not to... It, not to appear as if they encourage that sort of behavior. I haven't, I've noticed that you haven't necessarily publicly condemned that behavior, publicly told your supporters, listen, God. So, yeah, like a lot of the, my, my favorite uh, creators online take great care to make sure that their community doesn't do stuff like this and to um, go out of their way to tell people do not contact these people that I'm talking about do not harass them in any way and to do anything other than that I think is is a good a great failing and, and un, uh, 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 unethical guys stop you know stop calling in these bomb threats who said it's my followers do you, do you have information that it's my followers um, I guess who, who else's followers would it be I don't know so you there's post, 300 million people in this country so you post bomb threats follow and you're saying it might be just unrelated people i have no idea uh, we don't know who it is have you taken steps to to find out we filed some foias with police departments yeah i mean there's just um it's not a it's not a um i mean obviously you're not going to know who it is taylor doesn't know who is sending hate your way when she posts her article um but you seem to think that she is responsible for that. And so, I don't know. She's just, like, not taking a position on anything, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. What have you found? Uh, we we haven't got to anything uh, useful yet that we can use. But uh, actually, one of them, we know it's, like, some foreign actor, not even from the country. So huh. who knows who it is. Yeah. Um, it seems like Twitter is your main platform these days, although I know you've been posting on Rumble. How much money have you made from the platform? It's personal. Mm -hmm. Is that... 
what sort of portion of your revenue um, is based on what, uh, Twitter as opposed to other platforms? That's personal. So speaking of Twitter, do you regret not getting a blue check? Because then you can make tons of money. No, I don't monetize online. You I don't monetize. Yeah, I don't. I if I was an independent journalist, maybe, but I'm not. I I don't monetize on any of my social platforms. Um, I respect that. I think that helps. Um, helps you kind of stay unbiased as as a reporter. Um, yeah. How you know? I noticed you sort of, speaking of the media, you've changed your approach recently, or at least it seems like you're being a little bit more antagonistic towards the media and a little bit more forceful in the way that you speak about the media. What led to that change? Uh, being lied about and defamed for two and a half years. <laughs> I guess what led to, I would assume you felt like that for quite a while. What led you to sort of change your the way that you speak about the media? or the sort of... Well, their attacks were ramping up. So like I said, you know, the lies and the defamation. Hmm hypocrisy you know if you eradicate transgenderism which i believe you suggested in a post today no i never suggested that oh okay you reposted a post that was advocating for that this is the single clip that i've seen um on tiktok i believe what would happen to the people that have already medically socially completely transitioned and are leading happy lives what would happen to them i mean what's your plan for, for that if transgenderism doesn't exist which it seems like you're that's what you believe what happens to all the people living happy lives as trans people well it, first of all the whole trans is it's based on a lie you can't change your you can't change your gender okay but so they could they could go live their 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 life i mean I can't tell someone what to do in their in their house. Sounds like you do want to tell people what to do in their house. I never said that. So you're totally okay with people being trans, just not as long as they're in public. No, I never said that. They could, it's the whole thing is based off of a lie. And I think that um, the fa this lie cannot be mainstream in our, in our society. It's just, it's a lie. And what harm is it causing? Do you believe? Um, I like the truth. I like truth. Right, but I'm saying, what what's the what's the harm of people expressing their gender identity differently than you believe it to be? What what harm are they causing? Um, like I said, we are a a um, a nation of truth, and I I'm, I'm, I seek the truth. What does that mean? Like she doesn't even have like the most no the like the most basic arguments surrounding like anti-trans beliefs like there's like a ton of arguments that can be made that um have to be you know dealt with logically but this is just like what the fuck is a we're a nation of truth but that's I'm asking about the harm. What's the harm? You might believe it to be false, but what's the, the harm? The harm is that there's a lie that is very mainstream and is being embedded into every institution. I guess I'm wondering what the material harm is. Aside from it's maybe something that you disagree with, as in your version of the truth is different than their version of the truth, what is the material harm of them living in their life as a woman or man or gender that you don't agree Not with? anything that's wrong is there a material harm necessarily. So there's no harm? I didn't say that. So can you name a single harm? Uh, the way that it's pushed on, it's pushed on to kids, first of all. What's pushed on to kids? Uh, gender ideology, transgenderism. Uh -huh. So the truth is that transgender people exist. And regardless of how you feel about it, regardless of what you think about it, there seems to be this thing that happens with humans sometimes where, um, oh, first of all, let's back up. There's, there's S E X your sex, male or female, the way that you're born. And there is a spectrum in between that biologically, you can be present as male and have female parts. You can be born that way and vice versa. Um, you can have male chromosomes and be a, a woman and be able to reproduce as a woman. That can happen. It is rare, but it can happen. Gender is a separate thing downstream from your sex. And it is much more of a social thing. It's something that we have 
basically constructed and put on top of these uh, this kind of binary of male and female. That is all just made up. There's no such thing as like truth or non-truth there. Um, that is all made up. And some people are born with a male body or a female body, but they don't feel as though they are male or female. And so, yes, they can't change being born male or female, but there are things that they can change to feel more on the outside or present more on the outside with how they feel on the inside. And that alone should be enough to be okay with it. But when you get into statistics as far as the effectiveness of gender-affirming care for transgender people, the incredibly low regret rate, um, all these things, and then the harm that is caused when you suppress and repress these people, when you harass them, when they're not supported, um, if you just take an honest look at all of that and you are halfway a decent human being, you will be pro-transgender and support these people or at least not live your life trying to spread information about them or hate on them or send hate or threats their way. That is just a scummy thing to do as a person. And we'll talk about this with like kids. I want to see what more she's going to say here. But if they're leading happy lives and they just are leading a different... Well, there are studies that show that they're more suicidal after transition. No, that's not true. That is not true at all. The, 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 um... ideations fall off a cliff after gender reaffirming care. The rates of unaliving fall off a cliff after gen gender affirming care. It is more effective than antidepressants for these people. And so I I even if you're going to come at, come at it from that angle, that is a common argument that you're just, we're just con concerned for these people and, and, um, you know, they have a mental health problem and that needs, that's what needs to be treated. They don't need to be, you know, um, they don't need to have gender affirming care. They just need to have this mental health issue fixed. And then they won't feel like, a uh, that they're not the gender that they were born as, um, there's a study out of Sweden. That is not yeah. Oh, the Swedish study has been. Uh, debunked many times over and the um, creator of it as well has said that it, it has been used for things that um, she never intended it to be used for. True. That is not true. Yeah, you can look up the study. Well, taking into account all of the happy people that have transitioned who are not harming anyone, you can't... Which is the over overwhelming majority of people. ...come up with a single material harm. So if someone says, I'll be happier if I'm blind, should a doctor pull their eyes out? I think that's quite different than gender ideology, but people do, you know, I guess... Someone says I'm happier if I if I chop my dick off and we should just let them do that. I think, you know, there's a lot of gender-affirming care that women do, right? And so, yeah, this, this is also like a um, rhetorical tactic that they use to make um, gender-affirming care or um, reassignment surgery seem just very brutal and gory and um like inhumane and it, it's just not the case i mean surgery is pretty can be pretty barbaric sometimes uh it, all surgeries are there you're, you're you're cutting open somebody and, and changing things um and like taylor's about to say like many cis people get gender affirming care all the time. We have guys who are um, getting surgery to be taller, having their legs broken and 
elongated, um, women getting facial surgeries all the time, um, augmentation surgeries, whatever it may be. Well, where's the outrage for gender affirming care for cis people to make them feel happier with their body or to feel more like a man or uh, more feminine or more womanly? Where's the, where's the outrage at that? Where's the concern about that? I mean, women ascribe to certain gender things. You see women getting boob jobs to affirm their gender. I mean, we're in Los Angeles. We see this kind of gender affirming. So again, you're comparing boob jobs and nose jobs to well, they're gender people affirming. Be, uh, buying into the lie that they could uh, change their sex. Breast enhancements mm -hmm. are gender affirming for women. There's a lot of women that feel small chested. They feel like it would be gender affirming for them to have plastic surgery. And they're allowed to do it. And I, I noticed that you don't critique that. I guess I'm curious, Haya, you know, there are a lot of people that have ideas about women, right? And about what makes a what makes a woman, right? What makes a appropriate woman? How should a woman you're saying you're not you're against people sort of like living lies or living outside this um, ideology that you've constructed. Some might say, look, we're both women over the age of 25 working child. I certainly don't have kids, you know, um, they might consider that not okay for a woman. Do you think it's up to the, do you think it's okay for them to dictate how, you know, you live your life as a woman? Do you think it's up, up or sort of where does that line get drawn? So, so again, you're comparing uh, boob jobs to a teenage girl chopping off her breasts. Well, first of all, so teenage girls get boob jobs, but breasts. Right. So, this this may be like a, a a good argument if you're saying like um if the science didn't indicate that this was an, a real thing and that gender affirming care was incredibly positive for these people if it if the if the data if the science if the medicine showed that this was a mental illness on par with like psychosis or uh, delusion or something like that and that these uh, gender affirming care was like harming these people in great numbers then yeah that might be a legitimate argument and we could maybe talk about that um, but that's just not the case when you look at the data when you look at the medicine when you look at the science um, from people who have devoted their lives to not harming others to making their lives better um, all of it points to transgenderism being a real thing, to people um, being born like non-binary being a real thing, and for gender-affirming care to be the most uh, beneficial thing for them to live happy and comfortable lives. And so the argument just falls flat. Like you, you just um, basically are just making an argument from Incredul incredulity that like you just make it sound as bad as possible um when really it's just a a normal uh procedure like many other procedures that people have done cosmetic or otherwise to make them feel more comfortable in their bodies Breast enhancements are gender affirming for many women. I'm, I'm asking you, why is it that people have to live under your sort of view of gender? And it's not my view, it's science. It's facts, it's biology. But biology, if, in, in, if we're talking biology, there's a spectrum. Yeah, that's, not, that, that's just not true. Science absolutely disagrees with that. Of gender, there's people that are intersex. That is a very a rare medical condition that has nothing to do with someone deciding that they could be the opposite gender. Excuse me. So, yeah, just because it's rare doesn't mean that it's not real and doesn't mean that it's not relevant. The fact that biology itself can be on a spectrum points to the fact that like um gender is on a spectrum as well even more so and so 
like that's that's kind of always where I start is with biology beyond a spectrum that people are born intersex and stuff like this and it's like okay well what are those people supposed to do in your society where they have to either identify as male or female and they have to take on these gender um, roles and expressions um, they have to you know be referred to in the way that you think they should be referred to what do we do for those people who were obviously born this way and then carry that logic down to transgender people etc is it so hard to believe that um there's like a mismatch there between their brain and how they feel about themselves on the inside and the body that they were born into it's just not that hard of a thing to grasp or to at least have empathy on. I guess I'm still kind of struggling to understand how you think if your view, say tomorrow Trump is elected, he says, all right, we're going to all live by Haya's, you know, decisions, right? What, what about all these happy trans people that are living their lives that are not harming anyone? What, is, what harm are they doing by living their life as a woman who medically transitioned, they're, they're adults, you know, I understand you have problems with kids, but with adult trans people, what, what's the harm that they're doing to society? To society, it's they're they're spreading a lie that is affecting children, also. Uh huh. So you just believe gender is is a lie. So the the thing with children is, um, transgender people are real, and studies show that they often, uh, most often, they they have a strong sense internal sense of who they are of being um, a different gender than the sex that they were born in at a very very early age like three four years old and it's it's not like once they turn 18 they like suddenly become transgender like these people are born this way quite obviously the same way that people some people are born gay the same way that um you know some people are born various orientations people are born transgender it's not something that they like grow into or are pressured into or it's like a social contagion thing and um even if it was like social contagion the thing that you would want would be uh more access to information on this from like an early age so that um kids can learn about this and and you know, they, 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 they have these feelings, which can be, I, I can't imagine having these kind of feelings growing up, especially like in a religious family or environment, or even just most environments in America that are just not very understanding or inclusive of transgender people. It's a very hard thing to go through and to navigate on your own. And so having more information uh, available makes it easier to make decisions about things or you know to to you know maybe maybe a kid is more of just like a tomboy or or um you know just maybe a little bit more effeminate which is 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 okay and you know they learn about this stuff and you you know they think okay yeah you know i'm not i don't feel like i'm um you know a different gender i i just feel like i you know, like, like boy things a little bit more, like girl things a little bit more. And, um, yeah, so you would want, if you wanted to like prevent social contagion, uh, which I don't think is a thing when it comes to transgenderism, you would want more readily accessible information on it. Um, and not just like leave these kids, throw them to the wolves and let them figure out, figure it out for themselves. Because obviously, again, this is a real thing that people are born with and often have to navigate on their own without good information. And, um, I think we will get better outcomes for people, um, for transgender people with more education on it. And we will have a more inclusive and kind and caring society, um, with cis people being educated on it as well. Why? And what if somebody said to Trans, you, you can't change your gender. Uh -huh. And what if somebody said to you, you know, you're not a real woman. 
you're not a real woman because maybe you don't you don't meet these certain specific definitions of femininity. That's fine. I don't care. They can call me whatever you want. But what if you would be forced to live by that system? Do you think it's fair that you would, you know, be forced? Is that to based live? in like science? Well, I don't think any of it's really based in science. Well, it is. Gender is a sexes. social construct. Well, well, well gender is actually made up. Exactly. Um, yes, we agree on this. Who, Good job, by, Taylor. By a child predator, by a pedophile. Uh, we don't agree. Yeah. We so, don't agree on so that. he made up gender, and now they conflate the two, and they use it to, uh, to basically, uh, trans kids. Um, so there are actually two sexes, and there are zero genders, and there are many personalities. That's what I believe. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of LGBTQ people say that your posts cause an enormous amount of pain. How does that make you feel? How does it make you feel that you're reporting on me? Can she not answer one goddamn question without waffling? Causes me pain. I feel sad for that, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So would you stop? Uh, no. I would 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 you stop, Taylor? I mean, hiya. I'm a journalist and you're a public oh. figure. But I'm just talking about, you know, these these non-public figures, right? These non-public figures that are... Well, if you put yourself out there on a public platform, then you're kind of making So anybody public. that posts on social media is a public figure, in your mind? Uh, if you're putting your videos out there with the intention that it should go viral, you want publicity. So if somebody's posting on social media, which inherently posting on social media, you're looking for attention, right? You're saying that that meets the bar for a public figure? Uh, I'm not a lawyer. But I'm asking your opinion. Uh, I think that these people, well, first of all, a lot of the people I post about are actually in positions uh, that are public, but teachers, I'm talking about doctors. the people that haven't, right? The individual private citizens that you've posted who are not, I would, I would argue they're not public figures. You're saying they are public figures because they're posting on social media? They want to be public. They're, public, they're going on a public platform and publicly posting a video on a, on a social media site that is that is meant for your videos to go viral uh-huh and what about twitter would you consider twitter as well a platform where stuff is meant to go viral every social media if someone posts something on social media that and it, it could go viral it's always so a risk. got it so when you were building your audience and had hundreds of thousands of followers then would you also agree that you were a public figure yeah. um i think that if i if anyone who puts something out there publicly uh anyone could share their stuff Got it. And so, but I'm saying you consider these people, LGBTQ people, who are just posting on social media public figures. I said I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the legal. I'm just asking your opinion. One thing, said, you, one thing you noted, and I'm, I'm only asking this because I know that you've noted that, um, you know, when I reported on you, that you felt like it was unfair and that you didn't meet the bar for a public figure. So I'm just kind of wondering, as somebody with such a large social media audience, you're saying people with much smaller social media audiences meet the bar for a public figure. Wouldn't you have considered yourself a public figure? Um, if anyone puts out uh, content publicly, then the, that content could go anywhere. That's what I believe. You know, it could go viral. Anyone could share it. It could go to the wrong side. You know what they call the wrong side of TikTok. Yeah. Uh, it could go, you know, people will see it. You, you can't control that. Mm -hmm. that that's, why, that's why they hate me, because they want to create this content, and they only want their bubble to see it. And then I'm, like, showing it to other people, and they just can't handle it. I think you're editorializing it as well. No, I provide very little commentary, probably the least from any other Twitter account that's even a quarter of my size. Let's talk about drag shows. Um, you know, you've come out. The way that she just takes no accountability for anything. A lot about, you know, you're very against drag shows. Can you give any examples of children being harmed from drag shows? Yeah, there was one where this mom was saying that her kid decided to be uh, non-binary uh, after watching the drag show and then the drag queen helped the kid buy like new clothes to be non-binary and you consider that oh so many questions with that Harmful. yeah well because non-binary is made up like you can't there's no such thing as non-binary um and then it just leads a kid on a path uh where probably they'll end up on in a hospital so yeah j like she said and and we agree on is gender is made up um basically you're you're born with <clears throat> male parts or female parts or some variation in between and then we put on top of that 
this binary of man and woman, of masculine and feminine, and all the roles and um, outward expression, everything that goes along with that. It's all made up. And so there are some people who are born with could be male, could be female parts, could be something in between who just don't feel like they fit within the idea of being a man or a woman. They just don't fit that. And so they don't want to express themselves that way. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing harmful with that. There's nothing untruthful about that. Hospital getting some of their body parts chopped off. You seem very against plastic surgery. Are you against... Well, I'm against sex change surgeries. Uh-huh. What about women that want to get their boobs done, want to get their nose done, want to get cheek implants? We're just going to go in circles. Well, I'm just curious. But I, it's good yeah. to note that you're, you're uh, comparing nose jobs to, um, to teen girls getting their breasts chopped off. Well, people often... I mean, like, again, yeah, I mean, teen girls get uh, breast augmentation. So what's the, I mean, it's it's a legitimate comparison. Um, teens get irreversible surgeries sometimes. And where is the outrage of that? And teen girls also get boob jobs to make their breasts bigger, right? So uh, the both are both are gender affirming in different ways. You seem very obsessed with one and not interested in the other. So that's kind of what I'm interested in. And I, I guess I don't really understand that because both are gender affirming in different ways. Um, I don't call it gender affirming care. I call it uh, sex change surgeries for people who are still alive that they can change their sex. Uh huh. Where do you sort of hope this will end up? You know, like all of this sort of the advocacy that you're doing. Um, I know you said you don't have a five-year plan for yourself, but what are some, what, what's, if you were sort of like going to describe your platform, what do you, what do you, what are some things that you'd like to see meaningful changes in terms of policies, laws? Oh, I want to erad eradicate gender ideology from, from public life. From public life completely? Yeah, the whole thing is built on a lie. Well, you certainly have a gender yourself. Gender ideology. No, I don't. I have a sex. Gender. There's no such thing as gender. Okay. I said gender is made up. There's no such thing I as gender. I agree that gender. So the thing here is, um, I could just as easily say that I believe that Christianity is a lie. It's built around a lie. And I think that it should be eradicated from society. And maybe that wouldn't be a bad thing, but as atheist as I am, I'm not anti-religion. I'm not a mil militant uh, atheist. I believe people are entitled to their uh, beliefs, their personal beliefs. And I believe that we live in a pluralistic liberal society, and that is a good thing. And um, the, the, the idea that conservatives would be so gung-ho about literally policing people's thoughts and identities that harm no one, that just make them uncomfortable, is terrifying. And the way that they would not accept that against them in any way, because again, I could just as easily say that Christianity is built on the lie and should be eradicated. Utterly ridiculous is a completely social construct no it doesn't exist it's okay. uh there's zero there are zero genders i have a sex i'm female there are zero genders yeah so you want to live in sort of a post-gender world where everybody okay go off queen they can kind of express themselves through personality however they like well that's what it is now uh -huh. but they're just calling it gender so but your you know there's males and females so yeah just just <laughs> Wow, she's so fucking dumb. And then, you know, so if they were to, infinite... let's, I'm just kind of curious here, and I'm yeah. certainly not a gender scholar, so I'm not sure, you know, maybe somebody sort of posed this question too, but if people were to just, let's just say, you know what, fine, we eliminate, we eliminate 
male, female, non-binary, whatever gender, we eliminate that. We're all just people, or we identify by our sex. Um, would you still be okay with people, you know, uh, dressing, wearing dresses if, you know, they appear to be biologically male or, um, you know, women shaving their head, you know, things like that. Would you, are you still okay with that as long as they're not calling themselves by a different name? Um, don't sexualize kids. That's what I'm against. But I'm just saying, like, you're, you want to live in a post-gender world where there's no gender, right? And anybody can just have the personality and express themselves however they want. That's how it is now. These people who are calling themselves a different gender, but I'm it's just saying you're, you're not right. really And your issue is with the, with the language around that, right? So I'm saying, let's eliminate the language. All right, do you it's support so people, pedantic. adults? Let's just talk about adults for the sake of, you know, this discussion. Do you support those adults having bodily autonomy, dressing, acting, you know, painting their nails or shaving their head or doing whatever they want to do to express themselves? I don't care if a guy wants to paint his nails. So you don't care, you don't care about... Just leave the kids out of it. Don't sexualize the kids. Don't confuse the kids. So speaking of sexualization of kids, you know, I think one group of young people that's constantly sexualized is young women. Um, what are your thoughts and, and why haven't you, um, I guess, come out more against some of the, the sort of sexualization of young women, especially in the right wing media ecosystem? There's a focus on youth in women. Um, there is a focus on sort of women under 25, women losing value with age. This is stuff, you know, that's been... Platform I'm a woman the in, the, in the conservative movement. I never once felt sexualized. You've never felt sexualized yourself, but I'm saying, how do you? Why don't you speak out about sort of sexual abuse in in the straight world? I guess. So, you, you just change topics. No, no, no. I'm saying. Yeah, sometimes in the interview, you go on to different questions. Like you're saying, we're, we're against the sexualization of kids. Yeah. One group of children that's constantly sexualized is young women. 13-year-old girls, 14-year-old girls are constantly sexualized. Constantly bringing it back to talking about children is uh, is a tactic um, because there's just no really good argument against all of this for adults. Um, if you believe in liberty, you believe in freedom, you believe in freedom of expression, which less and less it seems like they believe in, um, it's just hard to make a strong argument against being transgender, being non-binary, gender ideology, all this stuff. And so um, it's a much easier defense to talk about protecting children, to give a front of you caring about children, when that's just obviously not the case. They don't care about children. Um, I mean, I you know, of course they do to some extent. Everybody cares about children. But they use them as a as a talking point, and they promote things that are harmful to LGBTQ children. Um, because again, LGBTQ people are born the way that they are. They don't magically become that once they turn eighteen. And so, um, helping them navigate their identities, helping them navigate their orientation, um, all these things are really important meeting them where they're at and helping them through it. And that has nothing to do with sexualizing them at all. ...on the internet, often by conservatives. So I'm wondering, especially given, you know, what some commentary has come from, from like people at the Daily Wire, for instance, right? They've made comments oh, about young women, women it. losing value with age, which is kind of a pedophilic ideology. Why, why not speak out on that? I, I've never seen that. I have no evidence. You've of... never seen young women getting sexualized? Um, I focus on kids. And you've never seen young girls getting sexualized? I've seen young girls getting sexualized. I'm referring to the Daily Wire thing. I, I can't answer okay, for but that. Okay, but let's just talk about young girls. Why don't you speak out about that? Why don't you sp speak out about sort of heteronormative, cisgender men? Traditional... It would be such an easy thing to say, like, yeah, I mean, that's that's a problem in, in our community, and I don't agree with that. To act like it just doesn't happen is is silly men sexualizing young girls young female girls i speak out about the sexualization of, ch of kids but you don't speak out about sort of the sexualization of kids by straight people i don't discriminate on who's sexualizing the kids but if the you, kid's being sexualized 
Well, that but power there's walking only girl. one group of kids that you're talking about, which is you're concerned about sort of people being sexualized by the LGBTQ community. I'm asking, I'm saying a lot of straight older men. Not necessarily the LGBTQ. I mean, if they're, you know, I don't want straight teachers to be talking about their sexuality in schools either. So you don't, you wouldn't be okay with a straight teacher, for instance, discussing their marriage? I think it's weird. Uh-huh. Why would someone discuss their marriage? Like there's, I don't know, there's, there's like discussions to be had about what's appropriate to talk about in the classroom setting, but like our sexuality, who we're attracted to, these are all just normal parts of life and to, I feel like conservatives are the one that are, are hypersexualizing this issue, that are making it into something that it's not. Marriage in the classroom. Honestly, I don't know. You are a teacher. I feel like teachers sometimes do that. You know, I, I do think that there is a sexualization of children um, from straight couples. I mean, I know that I went shopping for a friend recently to find little baby onesies. And when you're looking for little boy baby onesies, a lot of them say, you know, I want, where's my mommy's tits or whatever. You know, you see these kind of, I would say, sexual innuendo on baby's clothes. Yeah, I mean, I've never. I just don't know how far you're going to get with like trying to pin them down logically, but it, it is absolutely true that um, conservative people and, and, and it's just like a, a normalized thing in general, I think, in society to sexualize children from a very young age. And, and it doesn't it doesn't I, th I think it doesn't feel like we're doing that, like we're just being cute, but like talking about them having boyfriends or girlfriends at like two or three years old or like kissing or. You know, stuff like that um, is super common. I've never seen you post about that. I've never seen you post about sort of sexualization from the straight community, I guess. Wow. I've never, dis I don't discriminate against who's doing the sexualization. Um, I also, I guess, like, what are you defining as sexualization? But um, I've never said, like, like, oh, look, here's porn in school and the librarian is not straight. No, I don't, I don't care who the librarian is. I don't care if they're they're straight or gay or trans or whatever they, they want to say they are. Yeah, you know, I just I, think it seems, inter it, I guess I wonder why you don't focus on sort of like young girls as a woman. I mean, were you ever sexualized as a young child? No. I find that interesting because I think all women kind of experience that, although it depends on your community. But I do think that there's a, a focus on women and, and age as well. And there's this notion that women um lose value as they age and i know i hear that all the time in my comments from conservatives i've never once seen that actually. you've never seen that no. I feel like i've you... never seen a conservative figure say that women lose value when they age why do you think there's such an obsession so about convenient women ages then? When... do you remember uh charlie kirk just talking about how useless and dried up taylor swift is come on I mean, I, I've never known there was an obsession. I don't know. Really? Yeah. Huh. Women and ages? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like the uh, Trump finding out about RGB for the first time. Are you telling me I'm just hearing about this for the first time? I didn't know. There is a notion, especially platformed by conservative media. I think this is a failing talking point here. I think she should move on. That women lose value as they get older. Um, you see this espoused constantly when people are talking about reproductive capabilities. Oh, her eggs You're are saying when up. they promote like family values, like, oh, you should get married and have kids. Is that what you call sexualization? No, no, no. I'm talking about more um, derogatory remarks made against women and their age. I bring it up because I think a lot of your fans seem to obsess about women and ages. And so I just, yeah, it just, I, it's misogyny at its core. And I never see you speak up about that. So I was just kind of curious about. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm wondering like, like why you don't speak up about the sexualization of kids i don't think it's a problem i don't see i guess i don't see as much if i saw an example of a child being sexualized of course i have a problem with you know certain things i i will i will actually you know i will say so do you I, think we should give kids porn in school the the images of like gay sex and I so I had public again I went to public school and in public school at least when I was growing up we were absolutely given um literature you know explaining sex educating people it had pictures of like anal sex oh absolutely and it actually talked about condom use what grade god I mean I don't remember but certainly probably middle school I think that's when we had sex ed um, so you think like books like gender career this so like the thing is is like um 
again, there's a conversation to be had about what's age appropriate at various ages. But I mean, kids, kids are learning about this stuff one way or another, super early. And rarely are they getting good, factual uh, information from their parents. And so I just think it is vital that these things are taught in school and that, you know, we have like accurate uh, representation and and pictures of things and um, so that kids are not going off of actual corn. You know what I'm saying? That they're not getting their information from that. Um, because they're going to get it one way or another. They're either going to get bad information um, that doesn't teach them like the importance of consent and, and um, safety and um, stuff like that. That They're just not going to get that most other places. And so it, it just it is vital that kids get this in school. This book is gay. We should give that to kids in school. I have not read those books, so I don't know. But I do okay. think that it's important to educate kids about sexuality, if nothing else, because, you know, I have spoken to women um, that were abused um, sexually when they were young, very young. And one thing that they've told me is that they wish that they had the language to talk about it, and they weren't educated. They grew up in a, I only know two that I've spoken to about this, but they've grown up in sort of societies where they weren't very educated about sex ed. They didn't receive sex ed in class. They went to a Catholic school or other church's schooling. And so I do think it's really important for kids to understand sex, because as we all know, a lot of teenagers can be sexually active, and I think sex education is important. This too is something I agree with. Um, I, I really don't think, um, there's too early of an age to start talking with your kids about safety. And like I said, it's going to be age appropriate. It's going to be super basic at the beginning, but just giving them the language of, of understanding, you know, their private parts and, um, you know, what's okay. Um, as far as other people touching them, um, so that they're able to understand when something happens that like, Hey, that's, that wasn't right. I should tell my parents about this or in the moment to say, Hey, no, don't do this, et cetera. Um, yeah, it's, it's super important to be having those conversations early, early on. And again, it just does not happen in a lot of families and, um, like she says here, like they just don't even have the language to be able to express what is happening to them or, or to understand that something bad did happen to them um, right away. important to promote, you know, healthy attitudes, healthy understandings of sex. I mean, these are human bodies. You can't just expect to send kids off at 18 with absolutely no sex ed and then think that they can function in the world. So we should give kids um like pictures of gay sex in in middle school and actually elementary school some of them i guess i'm wondering what you consider that i think do you want to see a picture well she really wants to show her this picture i don't know but um i mean i are you talking about the ones that you've posted on, yeah. on your twitter account yeah. i guess those don't look like what i received when i did sex ed but i think sex ed is important because it it actually helps so you didn't have those types of things when you were in school Oh no, we had sex ed. I'm I mean, saying the images not, I posted on my not, Twitter. Did you, when you had sex ed in school, did you not get books with, with graphic with imagery? With pictures of gay sex? I remember, I, I don't know, I can't, I don't remember how old you are, but I grew up in the 90s when HIV and AIDS was a big thing, and we certainly learned about gay sex in school. So you, so those pictures I posted on my Twitter, you had graphics like that? I actually sex? don't know. I haven't, I, I don't remember, to be honest. But I do think that it's really important to But knowing those kids. pictures, you seem to know very well what my, those pictures are. Do you I think don't, that? I don't. I've seen oh, you. Oh, you kept referencing it. Well, I've seen you post things, well, but I, I don't know. Well, then I should pull it up. Um, but I think, yeah, I, mean, I guess I feel... Because we need to put this into context. Yeah. Well, we won't know the context, of course, because we don't know the context of how those things are being taught. Oh, so we could give kids, like... That's true, too. Like, what she is referencing here is probably 
from a book that is not a textbook, not taught in a classroom, that is like a book in a library somewhere. Pictures of gay sex, as long as it's in the proper context? I don't know. I mean, it's up to the educator to determine, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of curious, Kaya, why, why you sort of focus so much about the LGBT, you keep mentioning gay sex, but you don't mention straight sex. Why is there such a focus on the LGBTQ world? Oh, and I don't want pictures of sex in school, any pictures. So you don't think children should receive any sort of sexual education, straight or gay? I said I don't want pictures of sex in school. But you think that they should receive picture-free sex education? Uh, no, I think we discussed this earlier. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious kind of how you're thinking, you know, when you think about your, the way that you put out content and the way that you think about growing your media empire. Here, this is the, a blowjob. What, I don't know what book this is from. Gender queer. Okay. So should this picture of a blowjob be in elementary schools? I've never seen a book like that in elementary schools, but I have no oh, idea. It, it has been. Okay. I've posted about it, yeah. So tell me a little bit so about So should it be in elementary school? I have no idea the context. I have no so idea. So in context. what context should it is it okay if it would be in I'm elementary ab school? absolutely no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I would not I I don't know, Kaya, because I haven't seen the rest of that book. I don't know what's in there. I don't but know. The you, but there is a context that it would be okay to give kids pictures like that of gay sex, anal sex in, in I guess elementary sex, school. I guess sex pictures in school, I don't know. I don't know. Because uh, you know who I would defer to on that? Just because neither of us are sex educators, I would defer that question to a qualified professional, a sex educator, and say, hey, you're an expert. You've treated tons, you know, you've educated tons of people. You're a full-time sex educator. You've really studied this. What are the appropriate boundaries? I don't think that myself as a journalist or a media personality, I don't think I'm the right one to make that decision. And I guess I'm wondering why so you there, So there, the, I have seen sex educators say that they, they want these, these books in, in schools. So then uh -huh. you're okay with it? I think I would want to talk to the sex educator and rely on whatever the sex educators say. Okay. I'm wondering why you feel like you're qualified to be a sex educator when you have no background in that. Uh, I don't want to be a sex educator. I just don't want to give kids porn in school. Mm -hmm. I totally understand. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about sort of, you know, just to change topic, about your content world. You know, you put out a lot. You've got a whole staff now. How do you see your business growing and what areas would you like to expand into? I'm not going to get into my business strategy. Yeah, so I'm re just reading about genderqueer. Um, this is the one that uh, the fucking uh, senator, I forget, read this like on the floor and it was just absolutely, absolutely hilarious. But this is not a textbook. Um, this is not taught in any classroom. Um, this is... a book in the library and it is available to kids from the ages of 13 to 21 and let's see here see if I can find anything else interesting about it I'm gonna keep playing the video uh -huh. do you see yourself I've noticed that you've been doing more video content are you leading harder into rumble um I like doing video content do you have a partnership with rumble no would you uh, maybe what are your thoughts on sort of the way that Twitter has evolved. Um, I love Twitter. It's the best. I love Elon. Elon rocks. Have you spoken Elon to Elon? Elon saved free speech. Not like on the phone. Have you thought, would you meet with him? Yeah. Um, what's been sort of... If, what's been your like kind of criticism of Elon? Because you're like outspoken against Elon. I, you know, I'm a huge supporter of free speech and free expression. And I haven't liked um, the way that Elon has kind of arbitrarily banned journalists. I think that's a little concerning. Who did he ban? Oh, many. I mean, he banned, uh, I think he banned Tyler Brown, the researcher. He banned, obviously, myself, Drew Harwell, other journalists. Um, so what? So how do you feel about all of the conservatives that were being banned left and right when Jack Dorsey had I'm, You know, I'm of the personal opinion, and I've said this on Twitter and many times, um, that, look, it's up to every private platform to set their own community guidelines. I'm not a huge believer in permanent bans. And I've always said that. And I, you know, I defend that in the sense that these platforms evolve and people's usage of Yeah, at the end of the day, um, it is a platform's right to uh, choose who they want and who they don't want on their platform. There is absolutely nothing wrong if tomorrow 
Twitter wanted to ban every single conservative or every single liberal off of the platform. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, they would probably tank. They would be destroyed. But they can do that. That is their freedom of speech. That is their uh, that's the way things are under free market capitalism. If you're going to use the platform and engage in business with them, um, they have a right to say what's on their platform or not and who uses it or not. Um, the issue, though, with Elon Musk, though, is he has positioned himself as some sort of like free speech as ab absolutionist, um, so some sort of champion of free speech, and he has not f been true to that uh, going forward since acquiring Twitter. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to be so for free speech, you can't ban people willy-nilly the way that he has been doing, and, and often for, like, personal slights and offenses. Um, yeah, I mean, you got to be consistent. ...of them evolve and people evolve. As you just said, you weren't even a... You were a completely private citizen five years ago. You had no political ideology. Now you have a political ideology. You're a very different person. So when I got banned from Twitter, you, you were upset at that? Like, you thought that was wrong? Um... I don't remember you getting banned from Twitter. I got banned a few times. Not permanently, oh, but... previous to Elon. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, my feeling about any bans is that there should be a path to redemption, should you say. That doesn't mean that I don't think that it's in the right prerogative to ban people for five years, ten years, whatever. I just personally feel like if you're going to issue lifetime bans, you should give people a path to abide by community guidelines. If you join back on and you break community guidelines again, look, that's on you. But personally, I think that you know, I, I, that's just my belief, and I've talked about that for years. I think that there should be a path to um, path to abiding by. If somebody says, hey, look, I know I broke community guidelines. I know what I was posting was wrong and in sort of violating those rules. I could see, yeah, I could see, I could see um, tech companies allowing that back. And actually, that's what Elon has done, right? I mean, he reinstated all those people that were permanently banned. Elon is the greatest free speech warrior, I think, of all time. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> Well, I try to think what else. I feel like I've gotten through. Yeah, most I think of these that's things. it. I think we're good. What else do you have going on? Uh, nothing much. You know, I'll just continue uh, making fun of the media like I do best. Um, I still can't. I, I don't think you answered me to begin with. But what are some of your favorite media outlets? I said I like independent journalists. But who? Like uh, some of the people I follow on Twitter have the best news. Like who? Like who are your top three? Um. I would say, first of all, I love Daily Wire. Um, you know, I, I like uh, Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh. I, I Most notable independent journalist. I like everything they do. Um, I like, I really like Jack Posobiec. Shout out to Jack. He's great. Uh, I like Mike Cernovich. He's, he's cool. Um, who else is there? Yeah, there's a few others. Are you still um, on Substack, by the way? I know you had a Substack at some point. Yeah. What are your top uh, media plates for news? 404 Media. Love 404 Media. Are you familiar with them? No. Great website. Uh, independent journalist. Um, Walter Bragman, who does Important Context. Great Substack writer. A huge fan of his work. Um, God, there's so many. Uh, Matt Bellany, Lucas Shaw, Julia Alexander. Yeah. I'll have to check out some of these. Um, yeah, I'm trying to, okay. I'm trying to see, I feel like that's it. I'm just trying to think of an Uber and get out of here. I'm going to order an Uber. Awesome. All right, let's make sure. Let's see. I know. Sorry. Thank you so much. Let's see. Oh my God. I think this died. Oh my God. It did. Wait, let's see. Wow. Um, I have no idea why she agreed to that interview. Um, that was bizarre. And a disaster on her part. Um, yeah, she is a vile human being. And again, I don't think that she really believes anything that she is saying. I think that she has gotten, uh, accidentally fell into a certain algorithm that has been incredibly successful for her. And she has leaned into that hard and fallen down a pipeline. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe she believes all of this. Um, but what is undeniable is that she understands 
the harm that her platform is doing, and she is proud of it, even though she is not willing to take responsibility for it. So um, Taylor, I think, did a great job with this interview. Um, very interesting. Um, very important spotlight on a terrible person. So again, go uh, give her video a like. Subscribe if you find her content uh, worthwhile. Um, again, she doesn't uh, monetize on anything it looks like. Um, but she is a good source for uh, particularly like online news. So yeah, give her a follow. I hope you enjoyed. I am trying to grow my own community. So um, give me a follow on TikTok. Uh, that's where I'm most active. Blaine, B-L-A-N-E-F-J. That is my handle. Subscribe here on YouTube. And I am on Kick as well. So you have three platforms that I go live on. You can catch me on one of those. Thank you.